So let's get started. Um, if you can grab a bolster, like I mentioned, and cross your legs sitting in Sukhasana. Um, and whatever you just did, however you just crossed your legs, let's change it up, switching sides. And for those of you who have never met me, I'm so appreciative that you're here today, um, that you're practicing with me, um, and that I'm doing this for Thajal Yoga because I love this organization and I really uh, re uh, resonate with the values. So I'm honored to be here. Um, my practice started when I was very young, um, and I grew up visiting my grandmother in India, and she taught me pranayama, which will do half of pranayama through this practice. Um, so that's how I discovered yoga. And yoga for me has been a practice to help really still fluctuations of my mind. Um, it's helped me find balance throughout the day, especially working in like corporate roles. And that's how I share and teach it. So I teach workshops on pranayama. I teach um, workshops on how to bring yoga into your lifestyle. And my goal with teaching yoga is to help people see it as um, a practice that can help you find your balance throughout the day. Um, so with yoga, we can learn awareness when we're unregulated, we can understand why we are unregulated, and then we can actually use practices to help us find regulation. Um, so that's why I call this, uh, this session cultivating sattva. Um, in the yogic tr and Ayurvedic tradition, there's three gunas, and gunas, if you don't know what that is, is um, basically, essentially, a quality that is present in everything in nature, from our surroundings to uh, ourselves, the earth, um, our pets, and um, everything has different qualities that we can use to identify where we are. Um, those qualities are tamas, which is like this heavier, um, you can think of like the roots of the tree tends to be a little bit heavier and like a grounded, um, also lethargic. Um, there's rajas, which is this like excited energy when you're a little nervous, you talk fast, like I might be doing right now. Um, and then there's a suffix state where it's like right in the center where you find this balance um, you can almost think of it like bright. Um, I like to think of it like qualities of the sun, um, and it helps you to energize and just find that natural grounding. So this practice is going to be cultivating sattva, that, that center place. Um, and we'll do a little bit of asana, and then we'll go into pranayama. And more than anything, I want you to notice the energetic effects of the yoga on your um, body, um, instead of just kind of going through it uh, with more of the movement uh, robotic mind. So if you can just close your eyes or take your gaze down and start to notice your breath. Start to notice every inhale that you take, bringing in new energy. And then start to notice every exhale that you release something that you don't need. Again, each inhale, allowing life to enter the body and every exhale, releasing. And then with that awareness that we have just cultivated, start to tap into your body, noticing anything that is arising, any tension, any lightness. And then start to tap into the breath. Tapping into the mind now, notice thoughts that are coming, stillness. And then start to tap into your entire energy, your full being on your mat. And if you can think of one word to describe how you feel, I want you to go ahead and note that in your mind and let that be something that resonates with your being without any sort of judgment. Just acknowledging where you're starting. Then you can take your gaze down, blink your eyes open, lift your head back up, coming back to your space. And then starting with some light movement, draw your hands out to the sides. Inhale, reach, 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 reach up. Anjali Mudra, take your gaze up between the palms. Good, and then exhale as you turn your palms down, let your hands melt down, releasing, 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 releasing. And I love like lightly pressing anything away that I don't need. Good, inhale, reach, take your gaze up and exhale, release. Exhale as you do so, pressing it away. One more just like that, inhale, reach. This time I want you to take your right hand, grab the wrist of your left and draw your torso to the right side. Take your gaze up and keep breathing into the side body stretch. Side stretching is really good for cultivating sattva, this balanced state. Coming back to the center, take the right hand, the uh, left hand, take the right hand with the left hand and draw your hands to the left side. Again, taking your gaze up. 
Good. And then reaching the hands all the way up, turn your torso to the right side. Let the hands come down towards the mat or your bolster or whatever you're sitting on. As you inhale, lengthen your spine up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, twist a little deeper, keeping the hands down towards the ground. Good. Twisting is another thing that helps us to find balance through the day. Inhale back to the center. And then exhale, drawing the hands to the opposite side. Perfect. Crawling the hands back to the center. Uh, you can remove any props from your mat and come into Brahmanasana tabletop with a neutral spine, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Good. And almost imagine you're balancing a coffee cup on your, on your spine here, nice and level. And then as you take your gaze down, let your heart sink down, take your gaze up to the ceiling. This is a little slight little back bend here. And I know you're getting, some people are just getting set up. No worries. We'll, we'll hold this for a moment so you can all join us. As you're in this back bend, start to notice the energetic effect. This is activating for the system. So start to just notice how that feels, taking your gaze up. And then press the ground away, draw your chin to your chest, and then take a couple deep breaths right where you are. As we round the spine and take the gaze internally, this is grounding our energy. This is the tamasic energy we talked about. So start to move between those two. First, arching the chest, taking the gaze up, noticing that energetic effect, and then rounding the spine and noticing that effect on the body. I know many people have done this in a yoga class, but the energy and the different moving energy through the body um, isn't really discussed. So the reason that this is so popular is because it helps us to find that balance. The back bend is activating, the rounding of the spine is deactivating. Nice. Finishing up your last round here, coming back to that neutral spine, and then taking your right leg back behind you, toes pointed down, and then as you exhale, plant that right foot between the hands, drawing the hands towards the hips. If you have any knee injuries, I saw a couple of those in the notes, go ahead and put a blanket underneath your knee um, so you can give your back knee some love there. Then as you inhale, draw the hand up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, cactus the uh, hands down, open the heart up. Anjane asthma, low lunge. Keep breathing into this. This is also a slight back bend. So feel that activating energy there. Three, two, and one. Release the hands down. Shake that right leg out. And we're gonna switch sides, taking the left leg out and back, and then drawing that left foot through, really pressing the ground away, arching forward. Make sure that the left knee is over that heel so you can prevent any kind of overextension. Inhale, reaching the arms up, and then exhale, cactus back. Opening up the chest here, three deep breaths. Three, two, and one. Nice, circle back to the ground, reach back behind you, and then plant the hands down onto the ground. Start to curl the back toes under. Keep your knees bent as you send your hips up towards the ceiling, coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Awesome. Let the shoulders release and relax. And it, once you land here, you feel comfortable, you can start to straighten out the legs. Good. As activating as this feels, it's actually a down regulating pose. So it helps to take our, in, uh, our energy internally. Taking your gaze forward, take your gaze between your hands and then walk or step forward to the front of your mat. Good. Let the hands hang down, Uttanasana forward fold, letting your full gravity release your head down towards the ground. Start to notice how this is helping you regulate your energy, sending it downwards. Good, and then take the hands towards the shin or the thighs, what we want is for our spine to be parallel to the mat. So wherever the hands need to land for that, you can go ahead and make that adjustment. Take your gaze forward and squeeze the muscles in the back together. Two breaths here. 
Good, plant the hands down to the ground and then step or walk the feet back, coming into plank. When you're here, engage the core. This is really energetic. And then tap the knees down towards the ground, send the uh, chest down towards the ground, and then send the whole body down towards the ground. So you're on the floor. Good. And then come into Bhujangasana Cobra with the feet planted, taking the head up towards the ceiling and hold this. Hold this for three, two, one, nice. And then press the ground away. Give yourself some uh, lift there and send the hips back to downward. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three breaths where you are. Good. So we took that really slow because I wanted you to all start to tap into that energy that happens when we forward fold, when we're in um, cobra. And so we'll do that a little faster now. Bending the knees, taking the gaze forward. Step or hop forward to the front of your mat. Good. Inhale, reaching the hands up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana, letting the hands drop down. You can have a block underneath and letting gravity do its thing as it sends your energy down for this tamasic effect. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on the shin or the thighs. And then exhale, plant the hands down, walk the feet back. Again, engaging that core, giving that energetic effect for the body, and then move through your own um, Chaturanga Dandasana into a cobra or upward facing dog. And I know some people have just been trickling here. Uh, we're just moving through some light asana and we'll get into pranayama in a bit. Send your hips back up, Adho Mukhashvanasana, downward facing dog. Three breaths right where you are. Good, last one, we're just gonna add a little bit more onto this, bending the knees, taking uh, a step or a hop to the front of the room or your mat. Inhale, reaching the hands up with energy here, all the way up. This time, give yourself a little bit of a back bend, reaching back behind you, taking your gaze further back. Good, seeing some nice, nice little arches there. And then exhale, rounding the spine, coming down towards the ground. Hands can be hanging off the mat or reaching for the ground. Try making sure you're hinging at your hips here as you come down so that you're avoiding the rounding of the spine till the very end. Inhale, take the hands towards the shin and then exhale, sink down again. And then as you inhale this time, you can reach your arms back, coming into this like modified airplane, squeeze the muscles in the back and then take a deep breath here. This is going to help energize the body. And then again, hands come back to the ground. One more, just like that. Inhale, lift, squeeze the muscles in the back. And exhale, hands come back to the ground, walking the feet back for plank. And then shifting the weight forward, really engaging the core, lower down to Chaturanga Dandasana with the elbows 45 degrees. And then inhale, press up to Cobra. Holding here for three, squeeze the muscles in the thighs, two, and one, lower down, press the ground away, downward, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, three breaths, right there, good. And then walking the feet inwards, come onto a seat, you're going to just roll your Sit bones down. Go ahead and grab something to sit on, like a block or a bolster, ideally something comfortable. Um, we're going to go into more of our pranayama practice of, of this session. So since it's going to be about 15 minutes, I really want you to feel comfortable here. That looks very different for everybody. For uh, a lot of people, a uh, bolster underneath the sit bones is nice. For me, for example, my knees come up a little bit. It's nice to put some blocks underneath as well. And you can also press your back against a wall if your, your lower back or your upper back is feeling strained. Um, for those who haven't done pranayama before, um, it's such a wonderful practice that I love to share. Um, it comes from 
prana, which is this like life force that exists in the body. That's the closest translation you can come up to. And the yogis believe that when we work with our breath, when we do different types of things, we can circulate prana through the body and we can energize and balance our system. So we have more of that sattvic energy. Um, so yeah, there's also a lot of like modern science that backs the effects of pranayama, including working with your mental health, helping with high blood pressure. So it's really, really powerful. Um, and we'll try it together and just have an open mind if you've never tried this before. It has a lot of power in these techniques. Um, so with the eyes closed or gaze down, start to just tap into your breath. Start to notice if the breath is smooth or choppy. Notice the little pauses before and after the inhales. Notice the length of the inhales, the length of the exhales. Just start to become aware of your whole presence breathing in this moment. And then I want to invite you to let your breath be even. So if you're breathing in for a count of four, you can breathe out for a count of four. And then we're gonna try that together. Taking a deep breath in now for four, three, two, one, and then exhale for four. Three, two, one. Good, we'll do that two more times. Inhale, deep breath in for four, three, two, one. And then exhale for four, three, two, one. Take a couple normal breaths in and out. If for any reason you're having an issue with breathing today, maybe your sinuses are blocked, always come back to this what we just did, this is easy in and out. You can always come back to that. Pranayama is all about the quality of the breath, not the quantity. So instead of trying to get for the next technique and trying to get a million breaths, we wanna make sure we're, we're doing the technique right. So what we're gonna go into is Nadi Shodhana, which is alternate nostril breathing for anyone who hasn't tried it before. It helps to harmonize the mind and the body. It really helps to balance the system. So for this, we're gonna use our right hand. And I'm going to show you close up what it looks like. Your uh, your middle finger, uh, your ring finger will overlap with your uh, pinky, and then your thumb is going to be out to the side. Nice. If everybody wants to show me that has their camera on, yeah, looks good, looks good, looks good. Awesome. And then you're going to want to make sure that your elbow is not pressing against your lungs right here. So you give a little bit of a room for your your uh, rib cage right there. And then take your thumb, plug your right nostril, exhale through the left nostril. And then inhale through the left nostril. Exhale through the left nostril. We'll do that two more times on the left side. Inhale through the left nostril. Exhale through the left nostril. One more time, inhale through the left nostril. Exhale through the left nostril. So switching sides now, we're going to plug the, um, the left nostril with the overlapping fingers and then breathe it in and out of the right nostril. So three times just like that. So breathe in through the right nostril. Breathe out through the right nostril. Breathe in through the right. Breathe out through the right. Good. Breathe in through the right. Breathe out through the right. Let the hands go down for a moment. Take a second to catch your breath. We're just building on. So this is not the alternating nostril. This is not Nadi Shodhana yet, but we're doing stages where we're building on to the full practice. Um, okay, so again, take a deep breath in and out. Prep your hand again, draw the elbow out, plug the right nostril, and then take three rounds of breaths in and out of the left nostril. Breathing out first, and then breathing in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. 
Switching sides, plug the left nostril, breathe out of the right, then breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in. Last one, breathe out, and breathe in. Letting the hands go down one more time, we're gonna do that. Just take a normal breath in and out before we go into this. Last time here, plugging the right nostril, exhale through the left, breathing out through the left, then breathing in through the left. Breathing out through the left, breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Plug the left, exhale through the right, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And release the hands down. Take a normal breath in and out. So we're gonna now start to alternate sides. So just like what we did, but we're gonna go pretty quickly between the right and the left, and we're gonna add a little bit of a count to it. So I'm gonna guide you through all of this. First, start by taking a deep breath in, prep your hand, and then plug your right nostril, exhale through the left nostril for four, three, two, one. Inhale through the left nostril, four, three, two, one. This time, plug the left nostril, exhale through the right nostril for four, three, two, one. Inhale through the right for four, three, two, one. Plug the right, exhale through the left for four, three, two, one, and release down. We'll do two more rounds of that. Take a normal breath in and out. Couple things to note. If you were straining your breath at all, if you had like a, a clogged sinus or something going on, um, go ahead and like maybe blow your nose. Maybe that will help, but also don't force the breath. So if and there's like a plugged nose, ideally you go back to an easier practice, like uh, not easier, but a different practice like samarithi, equal breathing, or you breathe really easily through the nostril. So there should never be any kind of force, especially when we have a blocked blocked passageway. Um, other than that, looks great. Um, and let's get started again, taking a deep breath in, prepping the hand, plugging the right, exhale through the left for four, three, two, one. Inhale through the left for four, three, two, one. Plug the left, exhale through the right, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the right for four, three, two, one, plug the left, exhale, through, uh, plug the right, exhale through the left for four, three, two, one. Good, and release down. Um, you can close your eyes or take your gaze down if it's open right now. We're gonna go back to just regular breathing here, starting to notice your natural inhales and your exhales. And we're gonna do something called Vishama Riti Pranayama, where we start to extend our exhales so they're longer than our inhales. This will help to prep for what we're doing next. And this also helps to cool the system down, um, to relax the system, system, building that tamas energy or cultivating that tamas uh, guna. So start to just take a deep breath in, breathing in for four, three, two, one, and then exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, deep breath in for four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a normal breath in and out. If that felt strain in any way, if you felt you were forcing your breath, stay where you are or go down a count. If you felt that that was uh, accessible, you can add a, two counts with me breathing out for eight. So wherever you are, we're gonna start with the breath in together, taking a deep breath in for four, three, two, one, and then exhale for your count for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's do that one more time. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, catch your breath again. Just noticing your breath in, your breath out. Your being in this present moment. And then we're gonna go back into our Nadi Shodhana. Um, if you want to prep the hand here, coming into that position and then drawing the elbow out again, take a deep breath in, plug the right nostril. This time we're gonna exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one, plug the left nostril, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Plug the right, exhale for eight on the left side, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. You can release the hand. Um, we just added on to a layer there with our Nadi Shodhana practice. We are doing now one breath, one part breath in, two parts out. If you felt that was too strained on your breath, go back to what we were doing before, one part in, one part out. If that was accessible, we can try that again. Uh, taking a deep breath in and then plugging that right nostril again. Exhale through the left nostril for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Breathe in from the left for four, three, two, one. Plug the left nostril, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Plug the right nostril, exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Release the hand. Noticing your breath again. We're about halfway through this pranayama practice. So in this moment, I just want you to recheck in with your body, your mind, your breath. Just notice anything that's coming up. Taking a moment just to catch your breath. And then we'll go into that round again, same kind of one is to two ratio, taking a deep breath in both nostrils, prepping the hand, plugging the right nostril with the thumb, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Plug the left, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the right for four, three, two, one. Plug the right, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the left for four, three, two, one. Plug the left, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the right for four, three, two, one. Plug the right, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, good, good job. Release the hand, catch your breath here. We'll do one more round just like that with the one is to two ratio before adding one more optional step. Um, and then we will go into Shavasana after that because we're almost near the end of this practice. Taking a breath in and out, taking a deep breath in, prepping the hand, drawing the thumb on the right nostril, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, 
three, two, one, plug the left, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale through the right for four, three, two, one, plug the right, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale through the left for four, three, two, one, plug the left, exhale through the right for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale through the right for four, three, two, one, plug the right, exhale through the left for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release the hand, catch your breath, taking deep breaths in and out. So the last thing we're gonna do is an optional hold. This is um, a more advanced, it's actually the intermediate uh, stage of this practice. If you are pregnant or have high blood pressure, any kind of heart, heart ailments, don't do the hold, just do what we did before. Um, otherwise, if you feel that your breathing has been regulated thus far, um, you can definitely add, add that hold with me. It won't be too long of a hold. Um, so if you'd like to join for the hold, um, go ahead. Other, I'll be guiding the hold. Otherwise, please do the other option. Taking a deep breath in, plug the right nostril, exhale through the left for four, three, two, one, inhale through the left for four, three, two, one, plug the left nostril, but plug both the nostrils, hold for four, three, two, one, exhale through the right nostril for four, three, two, one, inhale through the right nostril for three, two, one, plug both nostrils, hold for four, three, two, one, exhale through the left for four. And release the hand. Good, take normal breaths in and out. Um, we're gonna do, let's see how much time do we have. We have maybe one or two more rounds of that. Um, instead of guiding each breath, so like four, three, two, one, I'm gonna change it now to do four and then you can count down and I'll go through the next part. Um, it'll just give you a little bit more of that internal focus that we want towards this part of our practice. Drawing the elbow out, take a deep breath in, and then exhale, plugging the right nostril, exhale through the left for four. Inhale for four. Plug, holding the nostrils for four. Exhale for four on the right. Inhale for four on the right. Plug both nostrils for four. Exhale from the left side for four. Inhale from the left for four. Plug both nostrils, hold for four. And exhale through the right for four. Inhale through the right for four. Plug both nostrils, hold for four. And exhale through the left for four. Nice, release the hand. And with the eyes closed for a moment or gaze down, just check in again, noticing your energy, noticing how you feel, and maybe just sitting here for a moment. We'll sit for about 30 seconds together in silence. So you can really absorb that feeling.
Taking the gaze down, slowly blink the eyes open, draw the head back to where you are and setting up for our final resting Shavasana. Um, you can go ahead and move any, you know, blocks or props that you have. Let your whole body lay onto your mat. Spread your feet to the edges of the mat. Turn your feet out and then turn your palms so that they're facing up towards the ceiling. It can feel nice to squeeze the knees into the chest at this point. So you can definitely do that to release the lower back. If you have any lower back issues, you can also put a bolster underneath your knees. And I urge you to get comfortable here. If you have lights on, you can turn them off. And I will guide you out in just a few minutes here. Start to tap back in with your breath. Noticing every inhale, every exhale. You can bring some movement into the body, wiggling your toes and the fingers. You can draw both knees and the hands to the right side of the body. Coming into a fetal position. And then using your bottom hand, take your time to press yourself back up 
into cross-legged easy pose sukhasana you can close your eyes or keep your gaze down here for a moment as we wrap this practice up together And take this last moment, just like you did in the beginning of the practice, to scan down the body. Notice how you feel in the mind, the body, and then the overall energy that you bring. Observe if that's any different than when you started the practice. I like to end with acknowledging the roots of this practice passed down from India from generations to generations to generations to bring us healing today. You can start to just reach the hands out to the sides, inhale, reach the palms up to the ceiling, drawing the, uh, the hands to the spot between the eyebrows of the heart. I like to also seal this practice with a meta prayer Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be free and happy. Thank you for joining me for this practice. Um, I encourage anyone to stay around if you have any feedback or questions. Um, yeah, it was so wonderful to practice with you all, and I hope I get to do so again soon.